All right. Well, good morning, Greg, and hello to everyone listening today. We uh, uh, do appreciate all of our listeners out there. We got a lot of stuff lined up for you next year that we're super excited about. Um, but we're still in this year in 2023, so we'll stick with what we've got for now. And, Holy uh, smokes! Yeah, we 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 thank everyone for reaching out. Um, it's been been a, a great year for the podcast, and and so I just want to right up front say thank you to all of you who are listening right now because I often forget to do that during the episode. Um, so now I guess then to start today's episode, Greg, which I should preface by, uh, uh, Michaela has like a horrible flu the last couple of days, and then Aww. Max was, Max wasn't doing well. And so I was up with the baby several times to feed him, um, which is not, you know, no, him really, he's been sleeping through the night, which is why we're starting early again today. But so, so j just so you know, you're going to be carrying the show today because I've got like one piston firing. That's great. That's <laughs> but, great. Uh, so folks, what, what he's well, saying, I'm, what Brian's saying is this is going to be a mega episode. It's, no, it's just, you know, if you could lower your expectations of me, uh, which I don't know if that's possible to to lower that was gin, by the way that's farther. great but but that would be it so for today's gin and uh, juice today today's episode um you know it, it, we're talking about um normalcy versus novelty yeah. Right. Yep, yep. And and so just to kind of give everyone a, a brief overview of what I mean by this is, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, reading things in your environment to include the behavior, but include everything that's going on. Right. And, you know, what everyone wants is always that list of things to go look out for. Right. All right. Uh, how do we find the school shooter? Give me the things I need to look for. Yeah. How do I find the person stealing from my business? What, who's the person on the street that's going to stab me or rob me or who's that? You know, it's always that. How do, how do I how do I get that? pure signal and, and everyone looks at what to look for where obviously our approach is here's how to look for things in your environment now when it gets into exactly. this the, the biggest thing is always how do i tell the difference between the person who's just you know an, an odd fellow you know someone who who, who you know is just a being a human being or quirky person to the person who's going to do something illegal or do me harm or attack me whatever the situation is like it's like that's ugly. that yeah that's always the the um the 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 difficult part right that's that's yep. the complex part that's the what part that's hard but that's what we sort of specialize in so i i kind of threw it to you to to you know talk about what's normal versus what's novel in our environment meaning what what normal encompasses a lot and when it comes to human behavior I, we, we've got a big wide sort of breadth the left and right lateral limit for what is considered normal meaning something might be kind of out of place or maybe inappropriate yeah. in a context yeah. but but it's still sort of normal behavior in a sense of what are what a, what a person to do and we mean that in a clinical sense so so just normal meaning okay like you're not on some sort of drugs or you don't have some sort of uh, uh you know mental health issue or something where yeah, where yeah. where there's some cognitive impairment like just just normal in the broadest sense of normal and that's always defined within a context within a baseline with for the, what the environment is and that's where our comparison is so so from that i'm i'm going to throw to you but i kind of oh, there's the show picture. I, yeah I, I, honestly it, it, brian look what you just thumbnailed okay the essence of human behavior profiling is normalcy for the environment which means if I'm baselining a human, you're normal, not my normal. If I continue to measure you against societal norms, then I could fall short when I come up to detecting anomalies. So what I have to know is I have to know more about you. I have to know more about Brian Marin and Max and McKaylee, okay? You used all those names and attributed to them. So now on the yellow pad, I have columns because if I go with, the human normal well you're not chinese and there's a lot of them so where's the percentage of that and what you ate this morning for breakfast compared to paraguay and argentina's economy is low no that's not the way this goes this is tower of babel speak what, what i'm talking about is rewind that a little bit to, to where you said folks listen to what brian is saying he's saying that that we have to uh create a baseline and then the fidelity filled baseline is what we use for comparison, but it can't be for all humans. That's where we go wrong. And so when we look at somebody that has purple and blue hair and they walk by, we immediately make a value judgment because we don't have purple and blue hair. Not that it's the first person with purple and blue hair we saw today. The next thing is we start going through a litany, Brian, a litany of different possible causes because it's different from our reality. So, well, you know, I saw one person one time 
that did that because they were a cancer survivor. Well, I saw that with breast cancer survivor and everybody got their head shaved and then they got it purple when it came back. Um, maybe that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Rotten, Rotten Johnny, um, you know, uh, channel and Neil Young this morning, but uh, uh, they're uh, some sort of punk uh, attributable. Listen, those aren't the people that you're looking for. OK, well, now, well, if we go ahead. No, no, yeah. no, re re real quick on that. And you what, what you know, that's how you kind of can fall into that. What you're talking about, sort of that fundamental attribution error where you see this. Exactly. And it, mean, it means one thing to you, but it can mean something completely different to that person. So you're already. Yes misrepresenting them you're Going already categorizing on... them incorrectly and you're and exactly. you're not taking it within sort of the the contextual baseline for what you're at and you also already kind of started talking about like there's a, there's a there's a time element in all this so you know when we do this and even i, I think it's good important because we we do some of it on, on our social media but like when we're talking about something it's almost like all right stop let's discuss yes. what we can prove and show right now. Now yes. in real life, it, it keeps happening. It keeps going, right? You can't pause or you can't stop the rotation of the earth, but, but, um, but meaning, um, you know, it's, it's a snapshot in time with some of this. And so time is an important element because that will either confirm or deny any precisions. It will, it will, you know, add to my hypothesis. So there, there's, I just want to add those in. That but the, the, the gift of time and distance is relative. Yes. So all time is relative. That's yeah, why yeah. I don't wear a watch. That's why I've never worn yeah. a watch because time is different on Pluto than it is on Mars. And I, I've, got a, I've got a clock on my cell phone. So I don't there you go. Exactly. Are. We don't need that. Uh, so, but the idea there is that, yes, I get it temporally, but temporally to you or to the situation that changes everything. So we see that person with the purple hair okay. and we immediately say there is an anomaly. Well, it's not an anomaly right. unless we know that person and we've categorized them. And in prior lunches over seven years, they said, well, I'll tell you what I'll never do. Yeah. I'm never cutting my hair. Yeah. And I'm certainly never going to go purple. Right now, all of a sudden they're late for work. Uh, their car's parked on a different street. They come in uh, uh, wearing a white beater t-shirt and there's purple hair. Well, now Houston, we have a problem. We have an anomaly that we have to inspect With from the perspective for. of that person in their environment, not me and mine. Because if I keep going, if my default is always my personal profile on my computer, I'm going to shit out a lot of potential opportunities before I ever consider them. And that's wrong. So heuristic template matching, okay, is a very good thing. But I got to consider the prototypes too. What am I saying? I'm saying that uh, external arousal is what a, allows a human to attend to a situation. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That's exactly what you were talking about, normalcy versus novelty. I'm now orienting on this because it's novel to who it's novel to me mm -hmm. today at this, at this time, time in this yeah. environment. Okay. So, so if I categorize that, and this is what, look, cops, cops, if you're a cop and you're listening to this podcast, stop police one sending me all these videos of cops getting shot where they're responding to a call with a man with a gun and they pull up. And they get out and certainly the man does have a gun and they go, oh, shit, on the video. And then they shoot it out. And many times the cop lives and the suspect dies. But an equal number of times, it seems that the cop is shot or injured. And sometimes the cop is killed outright. What am I talking about? Your brain understands that the dispatcher and some witness have already said, look, there's likely a gun at the scene. Yet we still think the red and blues and the siren mean we have to get there first. Well, you have to get there first. And the first rule of, of, of life is that protect your own. So protecting your own isn't throwing the other guy a gun and going, let's go. Let's, let's draw. Let's battle it out. So when you show up and you're not giving yourself to get the time and distance in this novel environment. Now, what do I mean by that? You've trained on the range. You've flipped the tires. You climbed the rope at gym class. Now, all of a sudden, here it is. Here's that situation. But it's not on the range, Brian, and it's yeah. not with simunition, and it's not with my duty gun or duty holster. And you're going, well, you know, that level of realism. No, cognitive realism means that you have a file folder for certain events going on in a certain order. Now the order has changed and the context has changed a little bit and your distance in the day and the burrito you ate for breakfast. And guess what? That's novelty. So now you're starting not a tabula rasa. You're starting on a timeline at your training. Yeah, we mm -hmm. default to training. But the psychological just walked in. And the psychological is going, fuck, that's a gun. 
And all of a sudden, in all the other trainings, you knew the guy that was holding the gun because it was one of the people at your unit. Or you knew the guy that was holding the gun because it was the trainer from this agency that came in with the red gun. Do you see what I'm saying? Now it's somebody you don't know, Brian, and they mean business, or they certainly look like they mean business. So each time something like that happens, the calculus changes. So you still work through the math problem the same way. You get what I'm trying to say? But the outcomes may be drastically different. So normalcy means this falls into buckets of normalcy. I walked out and there was gravity today. Normal. Okay. I, I, I had to open a door to get out of the house. Not all doors and windows were open. Normal. Uh, I had to walk downstairs to get to my truck. And my truck was actually parked where I left it last night. You see, yeah. those are all normal things. Even if my truck had moved, even if my chair had moved, even if the back door was open when I got up, I'm in a normal baseline, but those become that novelty, that nuance that now my brain has to categorize and, and play with. Now, uh, uh, what causes that false start? We're not anticipating it. But in those situations where they already say, hey, this guy's likely got a gun and he's threatening other people and you come screeching up and run to the scene, the fuck you expect now what you did is you turned it into a gambling uh, uh problem i'm yeah. rolling the dice well and there's a number of outcomes one of which is i'm going to get shot or have to shoot Come on. and 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 so to to kind of you know and and i think a, a lot of what contributes to sort of this uh errors and judgment failures and sense making kind of thing i mean you're you're talking about one with the, the police example sort of a the, yeah. those are extreme situations because you're at the limits of cognitive performance it's you're at the absolute highest level of complexity you know yep. within within and on top of that the, you're stretching the limits of cognitive performance so you're 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 that's yep. that's very volatile situation and and so but but even what what's contributed to sort of i think this misunderstanding with a lot of things that a, people don't get some of the times it's like we, we we put too much meaning in these these observations that we find novel that aren't so it's the kid with the the nose ring and the hair and this right and, and everyone wants to well it could be we're this. trying to equally like, weight that it's like with real significant observation it's right? like that that's yeah. that's not that that doesn't necessarily mean anything that's how that human expresses themselves in a certain way like yep. it, it it doesn't it, it doesn't define which is what and what I'm the point I'm getting at is like you have you just if you just go on someone's behavior that will make more sense because if that person walks Always. up and starts you know complaining about their fries being too cold and yelling at the poor person that has to deal with this individual like yep. it, you know getting paid minimum wage like they're an asshole but if they go up and they're polite to people and they ask okay they're 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 nice like I don't give given f what they're wearing right it doesn't exactly it, you know what i mean right. but, but these and i'm using that as an example because it's simple it's observable we've all seen it exactly. but, but then when it comes to the situation you're talking about that's when it affects you right, I mean, right. meaning meaning it, it gets in the way of our our, our judgment of things and and, yes. and we can't do that and and yes. that's and and so it, it, we think things are more novel than they are so we have to it, create which is why we have these big buckets right because you you're said the exactly buckets, right the bucket and, and has it, to be big and it has to be big. soft edges it has it, to have soft edges. Why? Because, because let's put let's change context. So you see homeless people, and middle, immediately it affects you. It doesn't affect uh, uh, them, and it doesn't affect their environment as much as it affects you. What do I mean by that? Have we ever met homeless people, you and I, when we were on the road, that were very articulate and intelligent and just the situation yeah. put them there? Yep. Have we met the raving lunatic shit yeah. in your hand and throw yes. it at a passing car? Yeah. Now, if you go by just one bucket for homeless, which do you choose? Well, you can't, you can't. because there's novelty, there's nuance, there's, there's external arousal. The reason we call it arousal is because it changes our chemistry. Because if it was nominal or normal, Brian, it right. wouldn't. And that's how we save calories. Because when we go through our environment, our eyes are scanning, okay? Our ears are listening to our environment. Our nose is smelling our environment. And if it's close enough, Brian, our brain says, okay, everything's wavy gravy, keep going. If there's a difference there, it's got to be significant to arouse us to orient to it. So we get fooled because we see the nose ring. And, and Brian, you got a great comment on nose rings. Would you mind adding it here uh, <laughs> no, so I can go off? It was, I, it was like it was a meme I saw. It was yeah. the, uh, does it hurt? 
Wait, there's the septum one, the one in the middle, and it said, does it hurt to get, you know, a nose ring? And it says it only hurts the people that love you. Exactly. <laughs> but... So think about that, you know, and, and I feel the same way about tattoos. When when yeah. I was growing up, and I, 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 let me get to that tattoo uh, by going outside and coming back in. So have you ever seen an episode of the Andy Griffith show? Yes. Uh, next time that you watch Andy Griffith, alert yourself to paying attention to Andy and how he wears his pant leg outside of his boot, because that's a sign from where he grew up. And my dad had the same sign. And he used to, uh, my dad grew up with uh, a guy from, uh, boy, and I'm going to lose his name right now, from uh, Hee Haw. And uh, they went to school together and they were both Tennessee volunteers. And this famous actor that nobody ever heard of, but my dad, uh, uh, they shared how they wore their pant leg outside of their boot too. And it was a sign in, in Brian, just like you have bloods and crypts and everything else. This was a sign of where you stood in the uh, socioeconomic uh, 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 area of Sevierville, Tennessee. And I thought, no way. And dad goes, yeah, look, uh, Andy Griffiths is from here. And he knew that guy uh, uh, from, from, from uh, the the show Hee Haw that was on TV. And, and he made a big deal about it. And I looked at that and I said, I would have just said, hey, your boot's untucked or your, you know, pant like yeah. caught on your boot. I would have never thought that that was a sign. And remember, most of what I learned about human behavior, I learned from my dad when I was growing up because yeah. he saw all of that and everything meant something, right? So so if I categorize that is look at this slack jawed yokel that doesn't even know how to untuck his pants when he stands up, I missed a very valuable cue right. and therefore I didn't accept it and wait it so I could use it going forward. And weight is important to me. We talk about that all the time. Certain cues are weighted more than others, like being belt yeah. aware. If you're being belt aware, when I see you walking around, or waist I think aware, you might yeah. have a gun, waist yeah. aware, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, if I see that you're waist aware or evidence aware, like uh, a person- You're wearing, glo- yeah, you're wearing, you know, you're wearing gloves. gloves when you don't <laughs> yeah. need to. A person that strips their cigarette down in a filter and then puts a filter in their pocket, you get yeah. what I'm trying to say? They're done with the styrofoam cup and they take it with them. Yeah. Okay. Those kind of things are interesting to me there. Uh, uh, you know, 007. What are we into? So those are cues that I pay attention to, but that you have a, a rainbow colored Afro today, unless like, look, uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick one. Folks that are listening, uh, go rent a taxi driver. Uh, take a look at, at the difference between Travis Bickle at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie. And the idea is anytime yeah. that you change to an M65 jacket and you yeah, shave your yeah, head to you a mohawk yeah, yeah, yeah. and you start tatting your face, you know, the, the idea is, Brian, those sudden uncalled for changes, very important to me, okay? And those ones where temporally I never expected that and it shocked me. They aroused me. They alerted me that something might be different. Adjust the color of your skin or who you're praying to or that you're carrying a yoga mat. That shit does. Look, you're carrying a yoga mat and it's got a center that uh, is a little bulkier than normal. Oh, there might be a gun in there. That, that kid the other day, I sent you the article, uh, sent to school under science project and that tube that was supposed to be a poster tube, right? Yeah. Okay. That, listen, those are important. Hey, are we having any uh, uh, you know presentations in the art room today? No, I don't think we are, Jim. Remember when we were at Liberty with the the violin cases and the music cases? Yeah. Come on, Brian. Those are the types of things we should alert to because they should be weighted differently for comparison. But your hair and your ring and your right back to the tats. When I was growing up, the only people I knew who had tats were badasses, and I got introduced to them by my dad, and their names were like Killer or Stompy. <laughs> or chokey you get what yeah. i'm trying to say you know suicidey was one of them uh but i mean they were all world war ii uh devil dogs think about yeah. that for a minute so so those were the only folks that i saw that had tats i walked uh, up and down i went to a uh, you know went to college i walked up and down my street i went to a and w to to shop with my mom nobody there had tattoos right and only those you know so so in my mind it created a schism and that schism became a bias because both of them took me off center and took me away from the answer. And the answer was, how can I weigh this artifact or evidence right, against the baseline now in this moment with this person? Because now, now it's like, it's, it's you know, people, when you, see, when, you see, yeah, when you see someone without tattoos, it's odd now. Mother Teresa had a tattoo. You're on her lip, you know what I'm saying? Tat, Praise right? God, right? So, so, 
Um, no, no. In, Somebody in, right uh, now just became a non-believer and exited our our podcast. But look, <laughs> it's a go. joke. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, you, you know, and and these, I, I get your your examples, and and it's it still, you know, it, it it's sometimes less and sometimes more difficult to do in, in this, a situation, right? Um, and you go back to observations being wait, weighted without training. Without well, training, trained people are right. tuned into a frequency. Sure, or For more experience you have, have the the yes. the more things you've seen in life, the more yes. you you can categorize things in broader, more general buckets, right? And and yep. and uh, that, that's kind of why it goes back to that when we categorize this different stuff. Like you you gave the great one, the the homeless one. Well, you can't just 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 because someone doesn't have a home doesn't it doesn't tell me anything about them other that's than psychological they don't, homeless. oh that's what i was going to throw that in there but you were well, yeah. earlier so, yeah. and uh yeah, yeah. yeah that's a new new t- term that i just don't understand that we but both i find hate. it hysterical um uh but uh, if you're gonna yeah. get me off track here no but 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 the idea is it that alone or or but but you can within an environment you know if it's a um you know, political rally for one candidate and someone shows up wearing the shirt for the other candidate, well, then that is novel, but in such a specific context, because yep. why? Because that's not what you would expect to see here. Maybe this person is, is looking for a fight or whatever. I, I don't yeah, know. Maybe anything. they're going to be disruptive, but that doesn't mean they're going to be dangerous. No, and body bomb, no, 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 no. Right? Well, so well, we, well, we can't allow that well, before you even but what I'm saying yeah. before we, we even get to that part of of determining yeah. what the situation is it's just determining that's why i kind of want to get into the novel novelty versus normalcy is like yeah. that is a, that that's the sort of start of determining what to do next right yeah yeah or, exactly. or whether to attend to something even right whether, whether it matters like you said to wait it i have to go is this novel for this environment or is this normal for this environment so you're going to understand something that that our viewers won't and our listeners won't so i'll add something to it okay the entire ton of cafes that I have up in my second floor closet are now useless and I can't use them for another 15 years. Why? Because the Hamas Israel war, okay, uh made the cafe a statement. And it wasn't a statement in all of the scenarios that we used. It was the common headgear of all of the people in the areas that we operated for 18 years. So the idea is that we had them, we carried them with us, not only for urban masking, but to uh, put a person in a role for that scenario at that time and place, because that's what the people they were about to encounter were wearing. But now, if we would wear one or I would wear one down in Gunnison, I'm making a statement to you. Right. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not, not. But yeah. I am. OK, so that item has taken on a, a relevance that I never intended or that I discarded when I did put it on anyway. Look, there can't be frequently asked questions on a website unless a lot of people ask those questions. <laughs> yeah. So so the idea is assume <laughs> that what you're seeing, everybody else does. When, when you wear that that butch cut, my, my brother Jeff uh, with his butch cuts all the way until he was 25 probably, and, and now even later in life, he's got that little you know, Jack Lord wave in the front, okay? Those were popular, so people adopted that. Now, when you get that nose ring and the eye patch and the gold tooth, you think, man, I'm setting myself apart. You're not setting yourself or... apart for, I don't know. <laughs> it's an international talk like a pirate they are, yeah. uh, but uh, it's not. It's in November, I think. I uh, but the idea being that you always think that you're differentiating yourself from everybody else, but you're not. So the two things that I would look for uh, uh, in, in normalcy is novelty, uh, nuance, uh, uh, one of both extremes on the spectrum. One, a person working too hard to blend in, or two, a person working really hard to stand out. Yeah. So I wanna take a look at those quickly, and I wanna assess, does this have meaning? So if you're on your way home, from the VFW dance and you're uh, driving exactly the speed limit with your hands at two and 10, do you get what I'm trying to say? And adjusting your mirror, you're a DUI. I'm going to keep <laughs> an eye on you for a minute. You're trying okay? too hard. You're doing everything right. You're trying too hard. Yeah. And people don't do that. So the, the same thing with the kid going to school, I'm not going to make eye contact. My head's going to be down. I'm carrying that backpack. I just got to get into the gym. Do you see what I'm trying to say, Brian, is those things aren't how the ant colony flows. Humans are like the ant colony. We're all going in or coming out. We're grabbing yeah. shit or we're taking it somewhere else. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, not not to be Gladwellian, but you have an outlier. And, and the outlier is the novelty. And so that's the one that I got to quickly take a look at and go, wow, that car 
doesn't fit this parade, you know, uh, uh, a la Animal House, yeah. which is great. All of my references today have become uh, coming from movies of the oh, uh, 70s and 80s. Uh, but, but the idea, Brian, is that, look, I would be more interested in someone in a seam or a gap than someone standing right in front of me. Okay. And that's a bold statement so, because standing yes. right in front of me, that means that you've already passed all the checks and balances that Greg has in place in his world. So, you get so it? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. for you to get close to me, that's an important fucking facet. No, but that, that seam and gap, Brian, that's the key. That, and that, that, that's a good that's a good point. So it, let's let's kind of explain what we mean by by seams and gaps. And and seams yeah. and gaps are things where that's where the bad stuff happens. Uh, yes. That's where thing. And it could just be that's where you forget you know, something that you were supposed to bring to your kids recital or whatever. It doesn't matter. You left the important item at home. Yep. Um, that's where bad guys like to operate in. That's where they find terrorist criminals insurgents are really good at finding the seams and gaps because they have to be right. Um, yep. That's where, it, that's where they, they operate in. And that's, that's what often goes unnoticed. And that that's kind of feeds into in a sense um, the, the, what we're talking about with, with normalcy and novelty, because, you know, it, if something if you're if you're operating in the seams and gaps you're you're that's immediately novel that's not normal no one and does that there's only certain in people the that do yes. that whether you're either you know committing a crime or or you're looking for those looking for those yeah, 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 exactly. that's where you operate in and that's exactly. a very that but but the seams and gaps so i'll let you explain but that's a yep. very narrow bandwidth right yep. i mean that that's a bit that's when we say what's normal in your behavior like my arms are stretched out from here to here you know what i mean but when you get into who operates in the seams and gaps man i'm i'm narrow it's like my hands are right here almost together it's a, it's a small yep. bandwidth so so what so let we, me throw yeah, some yeah, seams yeah. and gaps at you so Here's the thing. Uh, uh, you're getting on an airplane and you've just uh, had your ticket scanned because you're in. Remember, it, it says you're in group two, but group two is actually group 12 yeah. because, yeah. you know, one eye, one leg, yeah. flying purple people eater, anybody mm -hmm. with a baby between yeah. this age and any, then anybody with a baby that age. But between these weights, any I mean, they've got competitive so figure out. skaters exactly. like I don't know exactly. what, what's the next group. A ton of by you old fans. Right. So <laughs> the idea is that oh, anybody her. that does it. So now uh, a drunk is a skunk. Uh, so <laughs> we just scan our ticket. And then what do we do? We go on that long uh, uh, causeway, breezeway, uh, jet wing, whatever they call that thing, that's going to take us to the open door of the plane, right? Everybody got where I'm talking about, whatever that gosh damn thing is. All right. Well, at the end of that thing, there's a place that you can put luggage, and there's a little key cat, a code pad and a door. And so not only the person that riding it and the person that just uh, scanned your ticket, but the guy that's handling those bags that's going to take the carry on. And guess what? The first person that you see is always busy because the plane's always full and they're like, hi, but they're supposed to be turned and facing you, but they're not. And they're looking for the cotton swab or the alcohol swab and the flight deck door is open. So you've just created a seam and a gap. That's the one place that all security doesn't account for. And the most volatile place before you board a plane that something could happen between that door and the open plane door and that long tube that nobody's watching, right? It, it, there's no guard standing there, no, no camera and the open flight deck door. So if you were a flip and you wanted to do something flippy, there's a good place for it that you're going to have a few seconds to yourself before uh, uh, somebody's going to catch on to what's going on. Seam and gap. Your uh, husband and significant other or wife and significant other you're going through a highly uh, uh, contested divorce or just went with through one. And now you got to hand off the kids. Where do they do that, Brian? Yeah. Okay. They pick a spot. Yes. That spot becomes the semen gap. Why? Because it's a novelty to you and to the other. Yes. And all of a sudden the tensions and anxiety rise high because here I'm in this novel place and sometimes they have them guarded or with yeah, a camera or yeah, something. And now you it. feel perhaps humiliated and I want to act up not just act uh, uh, up, I want to act out today. Where am I going to do it, Brian? Okay, uh, the sentencing day in a courtroom, in the gallery. Yeah. Okay, all of a sudden, that becomes a seam and a gap because not just the prisoner, there's other prisoners waiting for their case to be called. And if this guy's a child molester, maybe he gets beat down on the way back or one of those other people says, hey, in this scrum, I'm going to try to escape. Or they go, hey, you can't do that to my buddy and I'm going to jump the bench. So 
these seams and gaps are the places between or before or just after, like just after sentencing, and we're going to walk down the long hallway, and it's the last time I'm going to see the light of day. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And yeah. I go, screw it. You, you know what I'm saying? This is the time I'm going to kick the shit out of this jail depth. We don't anticipate seams and gaps because they're just connective fiber. It, it's the stream between the forest and the, the car. I, I remember going hunting in a UP outside of a little place called Daggett, Brian. And I only had one day to hunt. I had my rifle sighted and had everything else. I was going to bow hunt the, the, the uh, early season. Couldn't do it because of college. Drove down, had my rifle, and I knew exactly where my stand was. So I got my rifle, got my orange on, uh, silently closed the door, stepped away. And there's the biggest mule deer buck that I've ever seen staring at me at the front of my car. Oh, and because I you, had you, no yeah, anticipation, I wasn't ready yeah. or anything else. I just said, shit. You and hadn't, started, you hadn't started drinking I, yet. I wouldn't you hunt know? yet. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't played cards. I hadn't played euchre and drank yeah. a bottle of uh, uh, Jack. No, but because that semen gap between my car and my hunting spot, Brian, I had never encountered that before. And therefore, I wasn't prepared for it. It became a novelty. And novelty means time. Novelty means that your brain needs time to recock and go, oh, that's different. Oh, what's this? It's like uh, 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 Nico. Nico was not a normal human child. Okay. Both Nico and Andrea were born on some different planet and transplanted in Shelly's womb. So Nico was the most polite kid at like three and four and five. And he had all of his own quirks, right? So we'd go to a restaurant and we'd talk to our kids like adults from yeah. the, the uterus, right? Yeah. And we'd go to a restaurant and somebody would come up and go, hey, little fella, can I get you the kid's menu? And they could go, no, thanks. Uh, I would like, and yeah. then he would say like yeah. Oysters Rockefeller or whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. Nico that doesn't like oysters, but you get what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah. He would say like, I, I would yeah. like one egg. Most, most of them want the tendies, the dino nuggets. You want so what? So where do you <laughs> think we start and that? Okay, well, that was novel to both the mm -hmm. waiter yeah. and Nico. So, so that's what we have to do. We have to understand that for every time we walk into an environment, we change the math. We create a ripple in that environment. What we want to do is when that ripple hits something, we want to measure that with our echolocation. What we have to do yeah. is we have to measure it with theirs. Right? It, it, so within, you, yeah, you come within, up within and you the, start the controlling of, shit. Yeah. Exactly. You're going to piss me off immediately because who do I think I am? I think I'm in charge. I'm in charge of my reality. And you come up in a uniform and go, hey, shut up for a minute. Let me talk to you. <laughs> no, not today. You know, that, that stuff might have worked in the academy, pal. But yeah. I'm going to make you earn it today. You see what I'm trying to say? That that uh, flash of reality, even momentarily, changes the dynamic of the entire situation. And if you change the situation, you may alter the outcome. And, no, and, and, and that and, doesn't and, happen every day. And, and, and uh it... <sighs> There's there's a there's a there's a lot we can can sort of un unpack with that and and yeah. you know when when you get into just I learning to identify what the seams and gaps are, it it actually gets you better at understanding that that normalcy right to yes. you get to categorize it better because you go oh okay wait a minute I, I get it we're we're just in Walmart you know what I mean so right. there's a whole social media account called the people of Walmart and it's the what craziest photos of stuff you've ever seen before. Yeah. But that's normal there. Like, I'm not going to see that at the, you know, at, at you know, some, some high end so place. So, semen gap, like cab normal, taxi normal. Yeah. You and I have had to take taxis in some of the sketchiest areas. In the yeah. World. Yeah. Okay. Columbus, Which are Georgia. always the college park. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, right. But, that, but, it, it, and he was that's the, not the, a slam. the college park Georgia. Georgia one was the best yep. cab driver we've ever yep. had. I didn't, wasn't sure if that, that vehicle was going to make it all the we way to the destination. The floor. <laughs> we were doing the Fred Flintstone on the exactly, on the, on and we could street. see the cement under it. Nicest driver we ever he was had so in good. the world. And he knew but, that, it, yeah. he knew that area like the back but of his guess hand. What? Yeah, that, that was novelty. The first couple of times you and I traveled together in these, uh, yeah, uh, areas that was novel. I remember the first time you and I flying out of Riyadh. Uh, uh, and, and it was just different. And, and when we had flown in, it was an international airport, but now we were in a local airport and everything looked different and it smelled different. It felt different. And the security posture was zero. Yeah. You know, there was a, okay, who are these nine folks? And the yeah. guy had all the member of the passports and some of them were, you know, uh, hand lettered and crayon. Yeah. And the picture was a line drawing <laughs> and, and, uh, we had a, we had to learn that. Okay. That novelty was something we had to assimilate over time and we had to compare it to, uh, other experiences because if it remained a novelty then it's an anomaly you see what i'm trying to say if it stood alone 
and it passed the, the strength of time and, and introspection and comparison and all these other facets. Then so, it actually uh, is. What's the difference between information and intelligence? Well, that's Somebody it. That's what we're talking it, about. They it's, process, it, and that's exactly it, what we're it, talking it, about. It, 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 it remains novel no matter how you analyze it. Like it, exactly. it remains that this is odd. You cannot justify what it is that you're seeing based on. Still it, sticks it, out. And, and it's we, we pounded the nail down and it popped back up. Well, maybe it's this. Maybe it's this. Maybe, oh, yeah. wait, wait. It's really not, none of those things that, that has to be. And and so that that's that's a great way to put it because, um, you know, and in, in, in you added that critical element again of, of time in there of, of how yeah. I observe it. Um, but but when something when when you seek to explain something right I, I want to how does this how is this normal for what it is right yes. here and how is it not normal and then if it's just artifacts and evidence in which way does it actually take you so, so, and that analysis over time but but and yeah and and, and what you also did there too is is compared to your life experiences and the context you're in so the the riyadh exactly. saudi arabia one is great because everyone's you remember that airport, you know? everyone's from an international airport all of a sudden you're there or it's the same thing I remember the airport in kabul and there's people getting off with yep. like all kinds of stuff and there's animals yep. in there and i'm like where did i just drop into so yep. but but the, that that was totally normal for that environment so it was no longer novel because of that and and that's i i get that that's what you're talking about uh, but make, making those determinations can can be can be uh, difficult if i don't have that gift of time and distance right if i yep. don't have the ability to and it is some sort of rapid judgment but the problem well, with that I, rapid judgment is and i fall back on it's got this is it this is this is the this is the one they were talking about exactly you know I mean? but but that rapid judgment comes from judging too quickly so what's the magic of judging the magic is, it, it, magic is very simple artifacts and evidence in support of a reasonable conclusion and if it's reasonable that means that other people would find it reasonable if you keep coming up with unreasonable irrational conclusions you should be pulled with a shepherd's crook look uh, uh no uh one TSA agent created the stereotypical TSA agent. Right. It was a number of them over time that we looked and said, hey, that guy couldn't chase me down an escalator. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 that person's, you know, ass was so big. And then the jokes start and stuff. Nothing against TSA because cops get the same stuff, 7 Eleven. Yeah, everyone does. Yeah. But stereotypes come from somewhere, Brian. Well, and whether you choose to use them or not, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's different. So if you allow uh, uh, heuristics to guide, rapid decision making i'll be in your corner because they're going to be right more than wrong if you rely on stereotype and social media and memes then i would yes. say hold on a minute okay how are you processing these artifacts and evidence what are you comparing them against we just talked about a person this morning that was yeah. slamming uh, uh coppers and and saying hey i'm just like you because i did a ride along wait a minute we love <laughs> ride alongs and ride alongs are a great way to learn about your community but a yeah. ride along doesn't make you a cop that's, You're not a card carrying member. That's you know, a, that's I mean, a novel. What, yeah, but but, but it, again, it, that novelty, uh, that person judged that novelty internally. These cues look. If you judge yourself internally, I'll give you a great one. Uh, there's that acronym I ju I for having my, a stroke. I judge myself constantly. <laughs> yeah, you're judging yourself now, aren't you? I but am. You judge. You're tired. You. You. Uh, there's that that thing about stroke. And there's an acronym, and right now I can't think of it, that's like lick or swat or toe. Uh, okay, somebody knows it, write it uh, so we know what it is. But the idea is if these three things start happening, you're probably having a stroke. So you pay attention to this because you probably are. Uh, the second one is all of a sudden I got this pain in my neck. It's radiating down my arm. My chest is tight. I, yeah. I feel like I you know, uh, am having the Valsalva maneuver in my pants. Okay, you might be having a heart attack. What, what, what are those, Brian? Those are novel when based on my internal baseline. Okay. But if you base a perception or an encounter on the street on your internal baseline, then you're closing the door to all of these perceptions and observations that are weighted differently up and out. So you have to measure them against the environment, not against your own effing life. Because if I do that in my normal wife and normal kids, again, we're talking clinical and normal house and stuff, it's going to skew my results. We can't do that. We have to stick with the science. And if the science tells us, you know, A squared plus B squared, we have to do it. We can't generalize and say, well, I found, okay, that's well, a mistake. No, Don't and, go and, internal, go external. And, and I like how you put that, the, the internal versus external baseline. But I mean, that could, literally goes back to why our like first 
of the first principles is people of the same all over the world. All over the if world. I look at that, I go, okay, well, well, exactly. you ever seen someone where it's like, uh, especially out here in Southern California, where it's a you, you yep. have a Mexican restaurant and like everyone in there is Mexican or Hispanic, and the people working there are, and they're all speaking Spanish in a lot of places. Yep. And then you'll see some people come in and they're, you know, oh, we heard about this place. I'm from out of town, and they almost like they don't know how to order. It's like it's 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 just a restaurant like you've done this yep. a million times before walk up here you order here and they're like looking novel. what is all that but it's not it, yes. it, 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 but it's my, novel to where my, to my internal it's novel it is. internal yeah it's, it, you, listen brian you just made a key point everybody uh, uh data mark this point in time and go back and listen to what brian just said you know my new favorite show is that andrew zimmer and traveling all over the world i hate the oh, yeah. parent attic piece of shit but the shows are great and a historical <laughs> perspective and he's a great chef and i really like the guy even though i want to hate him okay but uh today he was in uh florence so he's in florence italy and it's got a guy behind the counter on a food truck on the street and the guy from florence italy speaks no english whatsoever so they got the subtitles and a japanese family that's vacationing comes up and orders the street food and they did all pointy talky he holds up the hot sauce and they shook their head no he holds up the salt they shook their head yes he goes little or big right and makes the sign with his hands and they said a little and he goes okay and he said it in his own language brian the entire conversation was based on context and relevance and pointy talky that's how we are when we're up and out so we need to remain there. We can't go down and in and look at our wife and go, well, he speaks Italian. We're Florence, Italy. So none of this shit is right. going to make sense. We no. have to look for what uh, 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 connects us rather than what separates us. And that's why when we take a look at the hair and the hair is a blue color, our instincts are going to tell us that's novel and that's weighted differently in my environment. And we have to pull back for a minute and we have to look at it in the context of those observations in in that moment there, there's a that time. You, there's a great one i know i was, I was telling you about the show um the other day and i, I don't even know what's on anymore but all the reruns are on on uh on hulu you can they, it's like a national geographic one i was talking about where it's like they call it like to catch a smuggler is i think it's what it's called okay. yeah, but yeah. It, it's where they follow around it like, used to be on that geo yeah yeah the, the customs and border folks and they're at airports so they'll go to like the san ysidro you know port of entry here yeah. in san diego they'll go to like you know chicago philly at the airports and they'll show but it's 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 not it's a simple show. There there's not there's no like narration. It's just them going and they they they're, you know you see these little stories, people coming in, and how they investigate, and it's such a great example of how these folks who are obviously subject matter experts at what they do. That's all they do all day long is deal with the same people coming into the country. So there's certain things that they look for, whether it's narcotics smuggling people, whatever human trafficking. There's all yep. these things, but they all fit and they go. They all start with like, all right, well what they're doing without like using our lexicon, but they're just doing it on their own naturally. It's it. They're like, well, here's the anomaly I saw. Here's, here's what, what it was because typically, and they're laying it all out. We see this. So, so I ask these questions because yes. that will tell me. And then I go, okay, well, let me see your stuff. And then when I, if it fit, it goes, if it fits, it's usually good. Now, are they always right? No. I mean, they still bring people human. in. Well, yeah, but they still bring people in and go, oh, okay, this, person wasn't it wasn't anything or they i'm sure they, they, they miss stuff too but yep. but because they do that all the time they get such that fidelity filled baseline of what's a right typical more than trip. Wrong. oh way more but it but it's funny yep. how, how you 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 can see it laid out and it's just a great show of how you do it because there's no no one's trying to make it sexy no one's trying to it, and, and it really goes well exactly. this is what you do and then it goes to here and we know that because when we see these three things coalesce then it's different. Now that doesn't mean they're guilty yet. It doesn't mean there's anything yep. wrong yet. But that's more than enough for us to investigate. And here's so where's the semen gap. Like, this is incredible. Where's so, the semen gap out of the show that Brian just described? Well, in your ass. If I'm gonna yeah. put something in my prison wallet, yeah. it clearly is not something I go. Yeah, that's a a Rolex that I brought for my yeah. dad's 50th anniversary. I just thought, you know. Hell, I, I, it's, an it's extra a safe weight. place. I shoved it up my ass. Uh, uh, <laughs> my my, my suitcase thing. was at 49.5 yeah. pounds, so I didn't exactly. want to pay the charge. Uh, uh, suitcases don't look like people. Uh, uh, so uh, where do people try to apply the trade of stealing a suitcase? Uh, down oh, yeah. in baggage return, baggage claim before I go out to the curb, right? People still do that. Why, oh, yeah. why do people put their drugs in the suitcase? Well, I'm not really holding the suitcase except for this small time to get out of the building. So that semen gap. And I got one for, from you, uh, for you and a good dear friend of ours from Michigan that uh, uh, always watches us on Patreon as well. 
uh, she gave us a lot of information about school buses. <clears throat> you want to know about the health and safety at a school, Brian? Yeah. The semen gap is the school, the school bus, bus from yep. the time the parents leave them till the time the kid makes it to the school on that bus. You have no idea what your kid is facing, and you should. You need to, because that is the type of semen gap that it's, can provide information for stuff that's going to happen later on in life. And and the good, the school districts that do it right are the ones yep. that their school bus drivers are just as part of that education process as the teachers, meaning they're exactly. just as part of that community and learning and responsibility. And they're trained in uh, conflict resolution well, and de-escalation well, even and if they, listening Even if they skills. can't do that, they yeah. the, the good um, the ones that we've worked with that are really good, they like their their security folks include bus drivers in, the room. In, in what they do. They, they in the, room. the the school principal talks to the bus driver and yep. goes, "Hey, what any issues today? Hey, what's going? On? Oh, yeah, it's Timmy again. Okay, I'll keep an eye on him. You know this. Yep. Yeah, I think something's going on at home with this one because he was crying at the bus stop this morning. And normally he's yep. had, those are the thing that and that's a great example of of the human gap. I think it's because, the best example of this episode. Because people can relate to it if they've ever had kids immediately that there's a gap. There's a gap from the time you drop them off at the school bus stand till the time they get to school. And it's an important gap. Brian, why do uh, drive throughs uh, 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 become the scene of a carjacking and a, a robbery for that business? Because what's presumed from the clown's mouth to the open window? You have money. OK, uh, yeah. I, I pulled into this very special lane because I have money. What's presumed? When you're walking into the airport and you've got your million milers club patch on your luggage mm -hmm. that you've got some money in your pocket, buddy, you've got a couple of those credit cards that I don't have. So if I see you in the parking lot, I'm going to take you down. Why? Because in my world, that's novel. So I compare it against those other people I run from the cops and other criminals and, and potential victims. I don't measure it against me because if I measure it against me, I'm only going to get angry and I'm going to miss those cues. I can't. Uh, uh, get so emotion and emotions are huge in comparison in comparing the weight of a Q or a cluster of cues, but I can't use my emotional weight to skew uh, uh, the potential outcome. I have to stick to the science. I have to compare it. Uh, it's like, I, I don't want to bash on neurolinguistic programming or any other uh, uh, thing where a warlock is at your graduation <laughs> ceremony. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And it's, you get what I'm saying? Okay. But the idea is that oh, you show me the evidence and look, if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll change my view. But if a crystal ball is part of your training, you probably fuck we'll, something up in your life. Okay? We'll just, I'll say, I'll, I'll put it in a more vanilla way. Um, Can you? The, <laughs> the, this sell the supplement and health, you know, industry yeah. is massive and it yes. is massive because the, you know what? There's something called the placebo effect. And I'll just I'll leave it at that. Right. Yep, if you think up. something is going to work, work it, it will gonna. work for you it, yes. to a measurable amount. And we know that Me medicine understands it. Doctors know that if I give you something, you're going to feel better because yep. you've got something and you're you, whether it actually works or not. Now, that won't solve the problem like you can't can't give you a sugar pill if you got cancer but but right. but, but but a over... positive mental attitude can slow that cancer yep. and in many t uh, places yep uh make it go into remission Absolutely. So, so that's the key but but see that is a perfect example of you going internal there are times in your life that you need to compare internal you against you when you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and go am i ready for these yeah. challenges that's all internal yeah. Okay. But then once I go I, outside, I start crying sensor, when I look in the mirror. But <laughs> that's why I have no mirrors in the house. Yeah. All my mirrors are covered with uh, butcher paper. <laughs> but, but when I go outside, I switch that on. It, it, it's Shelly with, you know, uh, uh, in the old days, uh, putting on the, the gloves and putting on the glasses and, and you know, uh, doing the French braid on the hair and putting that cigarette in her mouth. I knew she was ready to go to work. I knew that was not Shelly anymore. Uh, uh, the Shelly that, that I off, married, yeah, that's raising that, kid, that's yeah, Officer that's Shelley, so, yeah. you know, the Sergeant Shelly, and yeah. start paying the, the shit attention because that stuff is going to come fast and furious. So uh, what we just created is a moment of focus pulling. So your normalcy versus novelty has to include your ability to pull the focus to say, am I measuring these cues against the person in their baseline or am I biasing potential outcomes by focusing internally 
and not coming off the gas pedal. And Brian, that'll skew your results and skew your results will skew your outcome. Yeah. Uh, certain, certain uh, cues are weighted much more than others. Get used to that. And if you don't know what we're talking about, get the two training. We're always traveling. We're always doing training or, or, you know, get on a phone call with us and go, Hey, I've had this situation. I don't understand what's happening here. I'd be glad to answer that. So, so in, you know, every, we, we, we've covered a lot uh, so yeah. far, but, but I, I think, you know, starting with the, the normalcy versus novelty and seams and gaps, you know, I, I think the big, um, the big takeaway or the big sort of thing I can use is that, you know, internal versus external baseline, right? It really is because, it, well, yeah. is this, is this odd for me, you know, and in, in what I think and the way I carry out my life and the way I view the world, my thoughts and beliefs and values, or is it, or is it odd for them or the situation? Because if it's odd for the person, exactly. then it is one. I mean, that goes back to the, Hey, you know what? I don't need this stuff anymore. Do you want anything? I'm giving away all my possessions. Yeah, and now it's so, pre-suicidal like, ideation. Yeah, it, on, but but know? but or or, yep. or you know or the context that you're in. It's like, wait a minute, you're no one uh, goes up and around that area over there. You're supposed to get in line here, and, and everyone gap. knows that. And so, Brian, your daughter at some age climbs out of the second story window, climbs down the apple tree, goes to the shed in the backyard, and grabs a bag of other clothes. And goes away from the house, and and somehow you catch her, you cut, caught on to it. When you compare those, you don't have to say a word. All you have to do is point to the window, point to the surreptitious way to get to the shed, point to the change of clothes, and give the mm -hmm. signal. Yeah. Okay. Because what now you're measuring that against their behavior, against the environment, and you're not using your internal. You're using what's right for this environment, and nobody hides in the seams and gaps when they're doing something normal they're not running out to buy you a christmas present they're yeah. not running out to go to church you get what i'm trying to say that's not happening so yeah if that makes sense to you another seam and gap yeah no no and, and there there's there's uh there's there's a lot of those and, and those are even yeah. that those are all demonstrations of intent to what, what you kind of yes, talk, talk about but, there but, but yeah but look in your house where are you most likely to slip and fall Yes. That's the novelty of a situation that's compared to a, a geographic baseline now, but it's an external baseline. That's the key. Okay, so now if you add an internal baseline to that, look, I got my suit coat in my hand. I got my luggage in my hand. I'm walking down the stairs from upstairs on a carpeted floor, and my pants legs a are a little bit long. Yep. <laughs> you go, okay, so, so now Peter what did Griffin you come down up? The, it's at a, the top it's step. a perfect storm. Yeah. yeah, and the phone's ringing, right? <laughs> so now we have the perfect storm. So don't tell me that you can't anticipate environments. Every time you can't, it becomes novelty, and novelty and, challenges normalcy and, on a and daily that's, basis. That's why I brought up all the stuff at the beginning of the show yeah. because when when is it that all of a sudden Max is starting to teeth and being fussy and not sleeping well? Yeah. It's not when everything's going well. Now what's nope. happening? McKaylee's sick, down hard, bad flu. They have to go days before Christmas. Ear comp we, we, weekend, so there's travel this weekend for her and the insurgent. Yep. And it's like, yeah, that's 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 when, and that's why I have to go time out everyone. Yep, you're staying in there. You're you're. I did tell tell my wife like you're. I'm locking you in the bedroom. You're not going around anyone. You're done. Don't even try to help because I know you're going to be trying to help. Exactly. The insurgent That'll just change the timeline. I go, you you're, 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 you're messing things up. I got yeah. this. I know how to operate for a week with little to no sleep. I've done that before. Like, don't worry. You know what I mean? But, but because if now all of a sudden, now I got to do this. Now, what about this? Now it becomes overwhelming. And that's, that's when things happen. That's when so it set your life up with the anticipation that that will occur by having some fail safes. We have a smoke detector that we check once a year on New Year's or Christmas or whatever the date is, but you do it. I know we do it more often than that. I have a fire extinguisher on every floor of my house. Why? Because as cool as I am and as tough as I am and as strong as I am, Brian, when it's my house that's on fire, okay, that's going to be novel and that's going to change the gosh damn outcomes. It's going to change the math. Yeah. So I have to rely on things, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, airbag in a car. The, the automotive company knows them no matter how good a driver you are, some other people are shitty drivers. So they want to try to give you that gift of time and distance I, with that airbag. And, Come and, on. You're, and you're talking about the solutions. I, you a perfect example too, with the, with the, with the kids and my wife here at home, like with, with, yeah. with Max, with the new baby. Great. We all know how to do CPR on a child. So I gave exactly, I no, but I told Harper, come here, grab Max, pick him up. 
or if something's happening, he's sitting there laughing, giggling, like, what's right. going on? I was like, stick your finger in his him. mouth right now. And so how this is how you sweep something out of his mouth. Do it. And it's like, well, what? it's like, uh, now, okay, what does that look like? What does it look like? Hold him upside down right now or, or on his Max. stomach and, and, and don't actually hit him, but tap where you would on his yep. back. You did. Yep. Do it with, with a kid. Yep. So now she's like, well, is it going to, I was like, he's fine. He's giggling and laughing. It's all good. Like you have, because why? Because now it's not, if something happens, yep. she's done it before on him not on the doll not in the class not in any of that like it's yep. it's real and you could see she was like oh man this is tough and i'm like yes this is why we're practicing this right now yep. grab them don't worry about hurting him because he's you're just trying to save their life you know but but the idea is is to take something like that because we you talked about the training and how to do that yes. and, and how to how to uh, uh, avoid those things it's like this is kind of how you do that. And, and so exactly. to make something yeah, this is is that, is episode, other, right. sort of the other side of the coin of what we've been talking yeah. about the whole episode, but, but I just want to throw no, that But like there. when you brought up intent, look, all roads lead to Rome. These are all good ideas. The idea is what we keep doing is we keep taking, taking the spacecraft out, uh, doing an orbit and landing in uh, Bosnia or, or next week it'll be, like I said earlier, Argentina. And this week it'll be Canada. Why? Because we try to get you 360, and I'm not talking about the countries or the states. I'm talking about your mental state. So you, if you're only comparing your life and what you're doing today to you, then you got a problem. But if you're only up and out all the time, then you're going to let yourself go. So that 360 approach, look, Hoberman still works, and it's still going to work. It's just we're ahead of our time on this shit. So take a couple of notes and try it. Uh, uh, you worried about the school bus? Do something about it today. Go uh, ask for a ride or ask what they're doing about it or ask your kid, hey, what's the environment on the school bus? Yeah. You ask them how their, how their day was at class, yeah. but do you include those? Yeah. So, Brian, I'm just saying that to, to counter the, the fallacy that normalcy and novelty uh, uh, don't create uh, uh, a turbidity, I, I say challenge your assumptions. Go out there and take a look at those seams and gaps. Because today, if you if you do just seams and gaps today and measure them around you, you'll be surprised at what you uncover. Yeah. And you know what? You can fill a couple of them with a hedge or a light or a gate yep. or, or uh, uh, a first aid kit or, yeah. or turn left instead of go straight. I mean, seriously, yeah. that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to open people's eyes to those new uh, uh, experiences so they don't shock and surprise you when you walk in on them. Yeah. No, I think that's a, those are all great great takeaways um again we went over a lot we kind of recapped yeah. it and so um you know if if, uh, do, if if anyone has any questions about what we talked about just hit us up at left of greg at gmail.com please um you know get to that and then of course we have the the patreon site where we uh where where we do even more and i put up some of our presentations on there too as well Aww. And, uh, and, and so you get to see some other stuff and just from different perspective. And again, um, that's all going to be even, even better in next year and what we're, what we got we going strive on to get, be and, better. and I'm getting some great feedback from, from those of you. So, so those listeners who have reached out about some of the changes I was talking about, maybe doing, I appreciate your feedback. It was all super helpful. It was very relevant and, and getting understanding what your takeaways from the show are. And, and, and we, we do appreciate that because we, we it, it's we want to make sure the message is getting through clearly and and you're receiving it and there's value here if you're giving up you know you're giving up an hour of your time to listen to us i want it yeah. i want it to be good that's meaningful I mean, yeah it's, it's uh, and, and to us it's, as well it's yeah. important and and i have a you know we 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 have a level of responsibility with that like i think people should be responsible for for that stuff that you're putting out because you know someone's listening to it and taking the time time is the most important thing in the face of the earth so uh, exactly. we do we do appreciate it. Anything else to add before we before we uh, 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 wrap, buddy? No, nothing meaningful. I got to throw a piss like a, you know, like it's that's hurting. not meaningful. Bad. Um, oh, I got a bio break yeah. that I got to uh, come in my, you know, maybe poor dog is snoring. Maybe we'll, we'll talk. Maybe we'll talk about psychological homelessness. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Okay, so two words <laughs> like uh, uh, down escalator <laughs> and jumbo shrimp. That should never go together. I just, just so you know. don't understand these terms. Psychological. Make them up as you go along. What? Like the one place you can't be homeless is psychologically. It's there. Your thoughts are there. They're living in your head. Brian, They're never the, homeless. They always these have These are well-meaning, <laughs> misdirected I, I know. miscreants. And that's why I don't, I try not to bash anything or get into that stuff. I do. I do. I know. Only, no, only for to good me, though. laugh. To you. Not but. In, 
everybody just, else has already shut us off. If you're, it's a mega I, I get it. You're well meaning. Well, if you're listening at this point, then you're you're we you're, love you. You're on board, and and we you got a lot for you. You're laughing <laughs> so, now, too. Yeah. All right. So, or uh, hating, but but that's fine. Uh, anger <laughs> anger is a good motivator. All right. Well, thanks. That's thanks. When the horrors come. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We do appreciate it. And yeah. don't forget that training changes behavior.